You, me, and HIFMB. Stories of science and the sea. Welcome everybody to the next episode of the HIFMB podcast. And in this one, I talk to another one of our fine master students, Nina Tombers from Switzerland. She works at the Center for Marine Tropical Ecology in Bremen and works there on genetics of um, a Caribbean fish. And for us at HIFMB, she is actually a student assistant and she, funnily enough, is involved in the podcast editing. So we give you a little bit of an inside scoop on behind the scenes podcasting. Also, obviously, on population genetics. Lovely sound. She's actually editing her own uh, podcast episode, which is going to be her last one. Unfortunately, she's leaving us. She's going to Stuttgart in southern Germany. And further, we also talk about her very interesting life that she's already had. Um, she's done some, some amazing internships, for instance, in South Africa, where she trained to become a nature guide. So for all things South African nature guiding, podcasts, and genetics, listen to this episode. This is going to be a good one. I give you Nina Tombas. Okay, everybody. Hey, and welcome to the next episode of the HIFMB podcast. And today I have our very own podcast editor. Hi. <laughs> Nina Tombos. Um, so you're a master student at HIFMB. Exactly. So I'm not writing my master thesis here, but I'm the student assistant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and editing the podcast for us. Exactly. This is going to be a wild episode because we have some, some insights on behind the scenes podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, first of all, about the science. So... Um, Where do you do your, your master's research? I'm doing my master's thesis at the ZMT in Bremen um, at the Fish Ecology and Evolution Group with Oscar Puebla. Mm -hmm. He's a professor at the University of Oldenburg as well. Ah, okay. So he was looking for students that would write a master's thesis with him. That's yeah. how you found it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay, right. And so, so you study at uh, Oldenburg? Exactly, yeah. yeah. What, what degree? Marine Environmental Sciences. Okay, yeah. sweet. Okay, first of all, project what what is it what what's it about so it's about fish genetics uh -huh. so i'm looking at the dna of fish mm -hmm. and we are looking at the barred hamlet okay yes yeah and they Re were fish right yeah exactly they were um, sampled along the mesoamerican reef mm -hmm. um, in front of belize yeah but sadly i couldn't do the field work that was done in a study before yeah what oh, okay but, right yeah because it was a corona friendly um master thesis yeah yeah I, i've got the the what is it like the master project advertisement in front yeah, of me exactly. and it's, it literally says it's corona safe <laughs> exactly <laughs> which was sad because i would have loved to go diving and collect samples but then again it was i mean i loved the project and i'm very happy that i got that one so, yeah yeah do you dive can you dive um i only have to like the basic paddy so yeah yeah but but, but it, it's diving it's <laughs> yeah. breathing underwater I, i'm more the snorkeling type so far but i would love to go diving again so, yeah, yeah sweet maybe maybe when it's when when, when there's uh, applications that are uncovered safe <laughs> <laughs> exactly normal life safe. No, normal life safe exactly <laughs> yeah okay so the it's genetic exactly. and and what w yeah what do you do so maybe you know the movie um Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one of my favorites. And there, there is this scene where he is um, looking at DNA sequences. So mm -hmm. he's looking at, it's basically just letters on the screen. And he is trying to compare, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Officer K is, is looking at his own DNA and then exactly. the DNA of yeah. the child that they're looking that for. Scene. And then he yeah. notices that it's the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing is kind of well it's not me doing it but i'm using um software that is doing something like that mm -hmm. so i'm looking for identical by descent blocks or segments mm -hmm. um i will call them ivd blocks from now on if uh, yeah so, uh, absolutely yeah. Yeah. ivd for identical by descent by descent okay so those are blocks um that are identical because they are inherited by the same um shared ancestor mm -hmm. so parts of the DNA that is the same. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if two siblings, they share a lot of the same DNA. Yeah. But if the farther away the shared ancestor is, the smaller these segments become and the less. Mm -hmm. So we can use those um, blocks to estimate relatedness. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're doing with these fish. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to use those blocks to um, use them new rather new model that mm -hmm. was done by Ringbauer et al 
and they used those to estimate dispersal distance and um, effective population size. Yeah. And so far, as far as I know, this model has only been used on humans and they w this would be the first try to use it on fish. Yeah, right. Do you know how the sampling is done? Is it eDNA? So no, uh, it's not eDNA. The okay. fish were um, sampled along 200 kilometers transect. Mm. Oh, so right. that was why the w this was one of the reasons that that fish was choos chosen mm -hmm. because we needed a fish that is... Um, it's living along a long transect. Yeah, right, okay. So um, the Mesoamerican berry reef, reef, I think, is the second largest. Oh, yeah? Okay. After uh, the Great Barrier Reef, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> um, okay, and, and yeah, that's how you chose that fish. And then now you're trying to, to estimate, like you said, dispersal rate. What, what was it? Effective dispersal rate? Um, effective population size. Effective population size. And the dispersal um, distance. Okay. Yeah, and the thing is, we are looking at the genetic variants. So um, we are looking at how close the genetic material of these fish are. And we can imagine the bigger the population, the less um, related the fish are if they are sampled at random. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, the dispersal distance as well will show that if the fish are close together, they will be more related. And if they are further apart, they will be less related. Yeah. So a problem or why we are doing that is that um, often in studies, you either need one of those um, parameters in beforehand to estimate the other one, mm -hmm. or you just use not genetic parameters. So you can have, there's a dis difference between effective population size and the consents population size. Co consents? Yeah. Okay. Right. And that's just how many fish there are in of in that population, for example. Yeah. And the effective population size is like how many fish are really there that produce offspring. Mm -hmm. And those are the important important <laughs> ones if you think about conservation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Got it. So especially with overfishing, yeah. we know that um, if all the big fish that are able to reproduce get fished away, mm -hmm. there are only some left that are not able to reproduce and strengthen the population. Yeah, so the, um, I'm actually working on, on uh, the big global assessments like uh, the Intergovernmental Panel for Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, ITBES, or um, CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity, and all these assessments, they're not assessing genetic diversity, mm. which is a big part of biodiversity, yeah. obviously. And um, I, I think work like yours is, is absolutely vital in, in getting that process going. Yeah. And I mean, if you think logically, I'm, the genetic variance is really important. I mean, we all know that incest is a bad thing, yes. but then we don't take it in account. I mean, it's not like siblings... Um, reproducing with fish, but still a variety in genetic material still makes the organisms or the population better at coping with any changes and also diseases and stuff like that. Exactly. So it is a really important parameter, it is. but still is taken into account way too li less. Mm. And it's and it's super high computing power, right? You're, you're yeah. working with this uh, what, <laughs> Carl High Carl. Performance Computing Cluster? Yeah, exactly. That's the Uni Oldenburg's own computer cluster. What, what does Carl stand for? Do you know? I think it's from the Oshinsky. Oh, oh Carl. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, Carl von Osiecki, I think. Yeah, Osiecki. Is, is, is the name of, <laughs> yeah, okay, right. Yeah. That's the name of our university. <laughs> exactly. And there is a second cluster as well, which is called Eddie, I think. Mm -hmm. And there is supposed to be a third one soon-ish. Right. But yeah, I used the Carl one. The Carl one. Yeah. <laughs> like ha um, another film, have you seen Interstellar, where the, the, yeah. the I don't know, bots are named after oh, yeah. other scientists? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much like that. Mm. Okay, so you got to use that. And then you, you apply the models. So what's the stage you're currently at? So at the moment we... Well, for this model to run, we need a genetic structure in 
this data set mm. and we want to see we wanted to see if there is a so-called isolation by distance pattern mm -hmm. and that means that um, fish that are geographically closer sampled also have a higher relatedness mm -hmm. than fish that have been sampled further away yeah makes sense so a big part of my work was to make sure that the pattern that we got was robust mm -hmm. and we proved that it was robust okay, but it was. it was we had to take some steps but it showed that it was robust so that was a good point in yeah my, yeah <laughs> Um, and now we want to let the model by Ringbauer run, mm -hmm. but that proved to be a bit harder than we thought. Yeah, okay. Um, and right now we are in contact with Ringbauer and also Nick Barton, mm -hmm. and they offered to let their model run with our data, which is really, really great. And yeah. we are quite thankful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the point uh, yeah, where we are now. All right. And, and can we wait for the publication to come up? Well, if the model um, works and we get results, yeah. that is a good possibility. Yes. Excellent. Watch the <laughs> Let's space. Let's hope so. Yeah. Do yeah. you have a Twitter handle? That no, I don't. No? Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> then um, watch you yeah. and <laughs> for the publication <laughs> to come up. Maybe I should get one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. So right now, fun fact, um, right now it's super warm in Germany. It's like 32 degrees in, in Oldenburg. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Sorry, Americans. Um, and we've got all the windows open and there's a train coming by my office all the time. So now Nina has something to edit out. Yeah, I can edit it out. <laughs> or maybe I will let it in there so you can hear what I'm not editing out. Yeah, exactly. All the, all the uh, troubles she has to deal with with my office <laughs> being situated next to the train tracks. Yeah. Okay. So that's your master's project mm -hmm. uh, kind of summed up. Yeah. And But you that's not the only work you do here. <laughs> I'm also here at the HIFMB, so exactly. else you wouldn't know me. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't be on this podcast right now. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe. 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 <laughs> We would have reached out to ZMT yeah, and like, sure. get some cool Because genetic Because my work person. is <laughs> so great. It is. It's, it's uh, very important yeah, to, the, that's to the global assessments. Okay. But podcasting, mm. a little behind the scenes. Yeah. So what is going, how, how does the editing process work? So Well, the first part is Jan's work. So yeah, so work. So I, okay. So um, maybe you should start with. Yeah, a little bit of a podcast rundown. So step one is I get the guest here and, and read up on, on their CV a little bit and on the work they want to highlight. So in your case, your master's thesis. Mm. And then I record it literally um this is incredibly easy with our guests usually <laughs> and and yeah then i send you the audacity file which yeah. is the software we're using yeah exactly we are using audacity it's mm -hmm. a free um software mm -hmm. so my job is to like add the intro and also if you have listened closely you can hear some waves in the background in the intro yeah exactly <laughs> so yes. i'm adding that as well and sometimes I use some fading tools mm -hmm. and then it's mostly um, editing out M's and and <laughs> I'm I'm really self-conscious right now because I listen to all those people talk and I know which sounds people make without noticing. Oh, that, that must be terrible. <laughs> yeah, and now I know every single one of those. Yeah, I know I always <laughs> say words double when I'm thinking and then... <laughs> then 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 I, mm. i would say it multiple times yeah so i was a bit scared because i am so <laughs> self-conscious right now about yeah. doing a podcast after um, editing so many but whoops <laughs> well you're doing very fine <laughs> and the editing as well is a lot of fun and listening to all your podcasts and yeah yeah do you get annoyed by my voice yet <laughs> Not yet, and <laughs> since it's my last week. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, week. yeah. Uh, so we we would have come up to that stage in the CV part, but <laughs> oh, now, sorry, yeah. now the cat's out of the bag, so you're leaving us. Yeah, exactly. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I told the other ones I would even keep on um, editing the podcast because because it was a lot of fun yeah. and yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that that'll be amazing. I mean. Um, Jessica is yeah, exactly. stepping in your yeah. big, big shoes, big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. And and so in the editing process, how much time is involved roughly? So the episodes are around like 30 to 40 minutes? Yeah, exactly. It depends yeah. on, I mean, we had the one with Irene where I added 
all those snippets of sounds and there was mm -hmm. a bit of m more work. Yeah. And then others who are, I mean, if there are people that ha do a lot of M's, I sometimes try to edit them out and sometimes I feel like they are also good for the um, listener to have a break to... <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like to think what he or she is hearing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to not edit everything out and ma make it too smooth. Mm -hmm. But it probably takes like three hours or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Per per episode. Per episode. Yeah. That's a that's a solid average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, it was a bit more, and now I feel like I've got the hang of it. And, yeah. yeah. And then you're leaving us once yeah. you've got the hang yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> As always. <laughs> yeah. But are you going to be? Did you do that before? Editing? No, I have not never done that. Or any audio work? No. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. But. Um, it was fun and I would kind of love to do it in yeah yeah sometime yeah will you future. do it after maybe 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 have maybe, your own podcast yeah maybe I will have my own podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. you can take one of the microphones <laughs> oh okay <laughs> we have that on tape <laughs> oh shit okay uh, maybe maybe edit it out after <laughs> okay and um, moving on to your CV mm. you're Swiss yeah I'm I Swiss. didn't know for like a <laughs> <That's> year <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy if people say that because When I arrived in Germany like two years ago, everyone was like, where are you from here? It sounds so Swiss and oh, yeah? people always could tell. And oh, right. I also had people telling me, oh, uh, if you speak Swiss, I understand you. And I'm like, I'm speaking German to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think my accent in the beginning was really bad. Yeah. But Most people tell me that it has gotten a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, I, like like Swiss German, I can't understand it. It's yeah, it also depends on where in Switzerland you are. Okay. Because some are like really, really bad. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna name yeah. any dialects, but yeah, okay. yeah. So it depends, and yeah. people. Some people are better at speaking the German German, <laughs> and some are not so good. Yeah, but you um. Swiss people know a lot of languages always. Yeah, so. I mean, we have to. We In school, we start with the German, I think, in preschool, so in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And then we have French from, I think, second class, and then oh, yeah. English from fourth class. And then in sixth grade, we can choose between Latin or Italian, and I chose Italian. Mm -hmm. And then in... Um, after that, I did three years in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So what would you consider that you actually speak? Which languages? I mean, English, <laughs> sure. <laughs> German as well. Yeah, right. Um, and the Swiss German. Um, and French, I get into that yeah. fast. But if someone speaks to me, like, immediately, I, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. a mess. <laughs> But um, Spanish, I can manage as well. But Spanish, French and Italian are all really close. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I mean, I would probably understand a lot, but mix up a lot of words if I yeah. try to speak it. So, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Okay. And, and through your, so what's your, you grew up in Switzerland. Yeah. Where exactly? Basel. That's right at the border to Germany and France. So we can like bike through three countries in like half an hour from yeah. my home yeah and that's where you went to university as well yeah exactly and what did you study in Basel I did geosciences so that's quite a similar to environmental sciences here in Oldenburg mm -hmm. so we had geology we had climate and meteorology and environmental sciences mm -hmm. so, yeah. in in English or in no in German okay so some lectures were in English yeah mm -hmm. okay and so you said it's similar to environmental sciences now is but that's not what you study now right no, no. Uh, um so environmental sciences here in Oldenburg is also a bachelor right. and ah, um, yeah, yeah, then I'm now doing the marine environmental science right. masters okay yeah, yeah. I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's also the reason why I came here mm -hmm. from Switzerland. Because as hopefully most of you know, Switzerland is not that much of an ocean. Yeah. There's no... I mean, there was an ocean in like 
a long, long, long time ago. We can find <laughs> like shells of mussels and stuff. Yeah, you were born shortly but, after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. But since I wanted to do something with the ocean and something yeah. marine, mm -hmm. I um, came here. Yeah, when did you catch the ocean bug? I don't know if it was a precise point in my life. I think it has kind of always been like that. Mm -hmm. um, my parents travel a lot and have taken me with them. and Th They're both Swiss as well? Uh, my father is German. Okay. But um, he is living in Switzerland for like 35 years now. so Still in Basel? Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah exactly. And I think it just has been the ocean itself over and over <laughs> again that <laughs> has planted the bug. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, we, so so that's where you're going to stay, maybe, in marine sciences? Uh, probably not at the moment. Um, I'm moving back. Uh, I'm moving to Stuttgart, so mm -hmm. away from the ocean again. Yeah. But it maybe the aquatic system for sure, mm -hmm. because also um, in my bachelor I always, I already focused on the aquatic system And that's something I really like. Yeah, and where do you see yourself long term <laughs> in, 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 in the sciences? Or do you see yourself anywhere in long term? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of have done quite a few things and loved all of those. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the science part and would love to do a PhD. But I also have done some other stuff, which I also liked. And I lo like working, working with people. So Yeah, we're going to get into that <laughs> in a second. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know. I have loved like literally everything I've done. So I'm quite open to what, whatever will come. Sounds like interdisciplinarity right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that would be great as well. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Okay. And so in your, in your bachelor's, that's when you started um, your, your genetic endeavor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. With, with so the... I did my um, bachelor's thesis also in genetics, but with mites mm -hmm. um, in like water sources in a Swiss park. Mm -hmm. And I also looked at isolation between those sources. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that was from, from 2016 to 2019? Yeah, the bachelor. Yeah. And, and then uh, afterwards, you, you then have some quite interesting parts coming up. <laughs> yeah, I did a gap year. And well, first I did a little internship Yeah. On Sylt, that's uh, yeah, I, don't think, I don't think it's a big gap there. <laughs> This is quite filled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there um, I was at the RV as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I did also genetic work, mm -hmm. which was great. Also the team there and also just the island is really nice. I mean, if there are not too many tourists. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> a very touristic <laughs> island in, yeah. the, in the North Sea. Is it still one sea? Uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, yeah, I it is. It <laughs> is because I think the RV is the one C station ah, from yes. the RV. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, uh, RV uh, Alfred, Alfred Wegener Institute. Wegener, exactly. Yes, exactly. Cool. Yeah, and after that, I did a nature guy training in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. What's <laughs> that was uh, how, how amazing. You, how did you come across that? So, as I said, my parents really love to travel and they also have a big love for Africa. Mm -hmm. And so I think the first time that I was in Africa, I was like nine years old and I have right. been quite a few times. And our first guide, we met him like a few years after that again we met him again and then he was like well Nina have you ever thought about doing a safari guide training and I was like oh he was a safari guide yeah as well. okay right. yeah I was like well no I didn't know you could do that as some yeah I don't know I never thought about about it where, where was it we did a travel from Cape Town up through Namibia and then oh, right. to Victoria Falls and that oh. was the first and to be honest the best um, travel we did in, in South Africa, yeah. Yeah, sweet. And Namibia, yeah. yeah. But this idea kind of stuck in my head for the next years. Mm -hmm. And then I knew I was going to do a gap year. And then I thought, well, Might why as well. not? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it was the most amazing <laughs> experience I have made, yeah. Yeah, what's it like? C can you paint as a, a, a word yeah. picture? <laughs> yeah, so there was a school and the school was in a 
bit of a smaller nature park mm -hmm. w without the big five. So yeah, oh, right, okay. <laughs> no really dangerous animals. I mean, snakes and stuff, yeah, but yeah. no big scary animals. <laughs> <laughs> and there we learned about everything a nature guide needs to know. So we learned about the fauna and flora. Mm -hmm. We learned about how to um, talk or to communicate with guests. We learned about geology, about the stars, about how to track animals. So we <laughs> learned to <laughs> differentiate between which animal made which poo and <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and we had zebras running around the school and it was amazing. And the most amazing part was that we um, had like trails mm -hmm. where we would go out into a bigger national park um, for a week. We had no phones, no um, watches, nothing. For a whole week. For a whole week. Nice. And we slept under the stars and um, like we had to do night watches because um, there in the big park we had everything we had what like was the park called infelosi that's Infelosi. Okay. yeah that's in um i don't know close to durban that's on the east coast mm -hmm. yeah and i mean it's just wild wake up in in the <laughs> night and um hear lions and then you see them and they are Ooh. not as far as you would m wish somehow so yeah, what can you do just go yeah i mean car? we had we had we, no, we would just sat there and we had a fire and we had people with guns yeah, and okay. the, the lions are more scared, hopefully, nope. <laughs> than, than you are. Yeah. yeah, but it was really, really nice. Nice people <laughs> as well and just amazing experiences. Yeah. yeah. But it was a cut a bit short. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Corona <laughs> yeah. came and we weren't able to do our last assessment. So we would have had three more weeks um, in a other bigger national park where we would have to take our exam. So we did the um, practical. No, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we t took the th theoretically um, exam, but we would have had a practical exam where we would have Right. to lead guests around and show them stuff. So that was cut short, the best yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, the best part. So maybe I will g go back sometime and yeah. take the exam, but... For sure. Yeah. Did you get to hopefully. speak any French or...? Oh, no, no. No, okay. no, but they always felt like, oh, Nina, yeah, that's great if you <laughs> speak so many languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't get to use it, though. No, ah, nah, shame. sadly. All right. And then what happened after? So so um, then you continued a, a different uh, internship kind of thing? Or? Yeah, it was also a course um, like the Nature Guide course. Um, yeah. And it would have been three more months of South Africa. But as I said, because of yeah. COVID, I yeah, had to go back. Yeah, you had to take the COVID safe route. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And <laughs> then I did a marine course online, mm -hmm. which was also a lot of fun but it would have been <laughs> better in person absolutely yeah but that was interesting as well mm -hmm. i think i gained a lot of knowledge that i could use in my masters now yeah so, yeah sweet and then in october 2020 you started your masters here. yeah exactly yeah and sadly enough it was only um online the entire so, lecture yeah oh. i haven't mm -hmm. seen any um, lecture hall from the inside oh, yeah that's so annoying yeah but I mean, I still got to meet some people and I got to meet all the people at HIFMB, yeah. which was really, really nice. Yeah, when did you make the choice to, to come here? In um, That was almost immediately after I got to Oldenburg. Yeah, okay. Um, and I think I started in December, beginning mm. of December 2020. Did you know about the institute before? Um, I knew a friend that did the student assistant job before me so she was like well i'm i'm done now do you <laughs> maybe you wanna <laughs> who was this nike Berenike. ah yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, met I, I met her um on sylt yeah. during my internship at avi all ah, right um and that was just really lucky mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know if i would have found a yeah. student assistant job that would that i would have loved so much yeah sweet and now, sadly, you have to go. Yeah, sadly. To, to Stuttgart. To Stuttgart. <laughs> and a bit closer to Switzerland. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How far is it to Basel from there? 
Um, I think two and a half hours compared to seven and a half hours from here if yeah. everything goes as planned. Yeah, which it uh, especially currently doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And and yeah, what's what, what's next in your life? Is it so PhD or or podcaster or nature guy? <laughs> well, we will see. I have an interview for a PhD, but I'm also applying to other jobs in Stuttgart. There are a lot of jobs in the environmental sector. and Okay. But I, like I said, I think I could be happy in quite a few places. And the plan isn't that Stuttgart is the place to be for the rest of my life. Yeah, so okay. Are you moving there with your partner now? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Then, so we're at the 30 minute mark already past it. And um, do, you, do you have anything to add? Do you want to highlight anything that we haven't mentioned? Um, maybe just a big thank you to the HIF and B at, um, for, <laughs> and to Jan's perfect podcast. Perfect. No, no, no. It's far from it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you heard the trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, just the HIF and B is a really great. There are a lot of great people with amazing knowledge and great personalities as well and it absolutely was and you were you were an absolutely <laughs> vital part of that yeah and it was really really nice to work here yeah so, yeah it's a nice goodbye to have a podcast yeah, <laughs> my own exactly. after cutting so, of Th editing so many <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for for doing that and for i'm, I'm sure the listeners appreciated your <laughs> editing skills yeah let's hope so <laughs> yeah absolutely that first yeah okay thank you very much thank you all the best <laughs> bye <laughs> bye bye Want to dive deeper? Surf over to hifmb.de or follow us on Twitter at hifmb underscore ol.